Back in March of 2021, I made a video detailing seven affordable games that I felt were worth your time, and among those games was Golf Story, a very fun indie golf RPG that captivated me when it was released back in 2017. Wearing its handheld Mario Golf influences on its sleeve, Golf Story managed to surpass those inspirations through refined golfing mechanics, clever writing, and really unique and entertaining scenarios that push the sport of golf to its limits. I love this game so much that I bought a vinyl copy of the soundtrack, so, as I'm sure you can imagine, I've been eagerly anticipating the release of Sports Story, the much more ambitious follow-up to Golf Story. The game had been unfortunately delayed a few times over the next couple of years, but when the game surprise launched on December 23rd, I purchased it frame one. And, having played it, it absolutely crushes me to say that Sports Story is one of the most disappointing games that I've played in a while. Sports Story is a game that wants to do a lot of things, but it doesn't really pull any of them off well. Where Golf Story was tight and charming, Charming, sports Story is haphazard and shallow. Sports Story has a vast array of different sports that you can play, but honestly, none of them are all that fun. The most interesting one is pretty obviously golf, which is mostly lifted from Golf Story, although the golfing in Sports Story feels weirdly less polished than it did in its predecessor. In Golf Story, you had more tools at your disposal like precision mode, approaching modes, and focus mode to help you plan and hit the ball at the exact power and distance that you want to. This is way scaled back in Sports Story. You have power shots, but the various ways that you could approach your shots are stripped down to the bare essentials. The second most fleshed out sport is tennis, which makes sense given the Mario Sports inspirations. Tennis feels... okay. I'd say that it feels close to the Mario Tennis tennis game on the Game Boy Color, but a little bit less mechanically deep. You'll basically just press one of the four face buttons to correspond with the direction that you want to hit the ball. It functions fine, I guess, but you don't really feel like you have a lot of control over the ball, so tennis matches can tend to feel like a vapid back and forth until the AI decides to lose. Compared to Mario Tennis, where you'll use a combination of lobs, drop shots, and smashes to control more of the court and get the ball past your opponent. Fishing shows up for a bit, and it's okay. It's only really used in one section and is pretty easy. BMX is just pretty much an Excite Bike clone. Cricket feels really undercooked and is barely utilized. Soccer feels like a reskin of golf, but way worse. And baseball's timing and collision are super inconsistent and feel awful to play. Volleyball is introduced at the start of the game, then is completely thrown away for several hours. All right, set me up, set me up. That's mine, that's mine. Nice, mine, 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 mine! All right, that's all me, that's all me! You gotta be ready for those. It's not great. Sports Story has a lot of different sports to try out, and I gotta admit, it's a very ambitious variety. However, the sports all, with the slight exceptions of golf and tennis, feel incredibly underutilized and underdeveloped. You'll occasionally find a side quest here or there that will require you to play a brief minigame with one of the sports, but that will be the last you'll see of that minigame for several hours. Cricket is introduced in Chapter 2, and I never encountered it again after this chapter. Not that I was begging for Cricket to come back or anything, though, it was really boring to me, because you basically just wait for a ball to be pitched to you, and then you hit the corresponding button, and it never really got any deeper than this. Sports Story is constantly stretching itself way too thin, trying to introduce new sports and playstyles, but never takes the time to develop them to a point where they're interesting. There's almost a hint at the idea that the sports are going to progress and get more interesting as the game continues, but they just never do. You see, I think what made Golf Story so unique and lovable was its ability to not just refine the golfing mechanics, but also push them to their limits with interesting and engaging challenges that you probably never would have thought could be built into a golfing video game. Sports Story, on the other hand, doesn't really have this. Sports are hastily introduced and then whisked away so fast that the challenges can never really get interesting. The most interesting example that I can think of is when you get a sticky hand and use the fishing mechanics to pull out some corks. While it is a twist on the gameplay mechanics on paper, it pales in comparison to the clever and interesting scenarios that Golf Story had. I respect the ambition that Sports Story has to introduce all of these different sports with their own unique mechanics, but I really wish that this game would have focused on fine-tuning and refining 
combining the mechanics of one or two sports and creating interesting challenges and minigames around those, rather than introducing and throwing out tons of ideas before they even get good. Or hey, if they wanted to create a game centered around a bigger variety of sports, maybe creating different characters with different campaigns similar to a game like Live Alive would have been cool. There, you could give each sport the proper time that it needs to be developed and become challenging without the need of giving players whiplash between switching from one half-baked sport to another too quickly. Sports Story isn't very interested in fleshing out its sports, but that certainly doesn't mean that there aren't quests in this game. The opening introduces this little beach area, but you're immediately sidetracked by being sent to go pick up a sandwich for Coach. Okay, now that he got a sandwich, we can... Oh... He wants juice. Okay, so now we need to go get an orange for the juice bar, and to get an orange, we need to get an orange token, which means that we need to play three pure strike challenges to get the attention of this lifeguard so he can give us a quest to deliver him some sandwiches, and then he'll give us the orange token to get the orange and now the orange juice. Unfortunately, this intro showcases a massive problem with Sports Story, and that is its incessant usage of fetch quests that completely derail the experience. Now to be fair, Golf Story had the occasional sidetracking quests here and there, but nowhere even remotely close to the degree that they show up in Sports Story. The vast, and I mean the vast majority of your time in Sports Story is going to be spent running around these different locations, trying to find a singular NPC, talk to them, get them something that they need, and then getting sidetracked by another fetch quest in in the middle of it before you can even complete that quest. You'll find yourself running around aimlessly, looking for a certain item to give to somebody in the hopes that it will advance the plot to where you can just please hit a golf ball or something. For a game titled Sports Story, there sure is a lot of downtime where you aren't playing any sports, but are instead solving mundane mysteries or doing an aggressively boring trading quest for water balloons. It's crazy to me that Sports Story is so focused on padding the runtime by forcing players to run to and fro, gathering items and talking to the right NPC, rather than actually creating interesting challenges around the sports that even get close to the creativity that Golf Story had. This is made doubly worse because the game offers you next to no help in finding who you need to talk to or what you need to get. There's no world map to help you get around, no waypoint system to help you find the right NPC to talk to, and the task list is somehow more shallow and less helpful than the task descriptions from Golf Story, which weren't even all that robust to begin with. I mean, come on, even Mario Golf Super Rush can get this right. Why can't Sports Story? It's very easy to get lost in Sports Story. Sometimes getting lost in a game isn't inherently a bad thing. Maybe there's just an ample amount of side content so you find yourself exploring and forgetting the main quest for a bit. Maybe the world is more open-ended and the journey of putting the pieces together to find your next story sequence is the reward. Neither of these is really the case here in Sports Story. Instead, the way forward is usually locked behind an arbitrary quest that you'd never think would be necessary for progression. Take this example in the second area of the game, Britannia. After a long series of quests to gain the Silver's trust, you're tasked with finding the captain of the cricket team and are given a Silver Mines lanyard to get access to the next area. However, upon getting there, the game wouldn't let me go to the Silver Mines, even though I had the permissions and the proper item to go, because I hadn't completed this one missable mission where you push and guide three minecarts to this mole so that I could get this one guy to vouch for me to be able to go into the mines, even though I already have approval from the heads of the mines anyways. There are countless examples of pointless, time-wasting quests that are baked into the main story for some unknown reason. If this minecart pushing quest was optional, it would be way more palatable, but the way that it's lazily slapped into being plot relevant is irritating, and unfortunately that issue permeates throughout the whole game. When I got to chapter 8, the queen told me I needed a desert token, which I had from progressing the plot. This is the final boss. I haven't been playing a whole lot of tennis, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to beat him or not. Okay, I did it. <laughs> and a senior certificate to progress. I had never heard of this senior certificate item before, but it turns out that to get it, you need to play through the whole Tennis Academy storyline, which is kind of just floated around the world map, but the game never really told me to go there, so I had just assumed it was either a side area that I could complete at any time, or the game would lead me there eventually. But no, I just kind of got hit with a hard roadblock and was told to go grind out the completely detached Tennis Academy before I could continue. The inclusion of the Tennis Academy is weird. It feels feels very tacked on, as if there's no organic place for it to go in the story, or any reason that the player should go there other than to get this senior certificate. So now, we've shifted over to an entirely different subplot that is really boring and involves a few tennis tutorials and some of the most egregious fetch questing in the entire game. The tennis lacks a lot of polish too, which makes it really easy to cheese the missions. This is so hard. 
Oh gosh. Okay. I'm sorry guys. Coming through here. Got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Saved it. All right. Come on. Get over there. Yeah. Interesting serving technique. <laughs> the way that Sports Story ties its different locales together is extremely haphazard. There's hardly any flow to this game's pacing at all, and you'll find yourself running around doing tasks, just hoping that something interesting will happen eventually, but sometimes that just never comes. It all honestly reeks of cut content, as if there was a grander plan for things like the Tennis Academy, but for whatever reason, that vision wasn't achieved, and this very disjointed story is the result of some crucial content getting cut. The way that Sports Story handles character progression is very odd as well. Personally, one of my favorite parts of RPGs is the ability to customize your character or party into exactly what you think is going to be most optimal. Pouring points into different stats, choosing weapons and armor to fit your playstyle, and choosing items to purchase are some of my favorite parts of some of my favorite RPGs, because I love having the ability to customize my character to fit my playstyle. This is something that the Mario Sports RPGs did fairly well when it comes to customizing your character's stats in the sports of golf and tennis, and Golf Story streamlined this process and made it even better, with clearer stats and giving players more opportunities to spend points on stats that they wanted to increase. Sports Story has a tough dilemma here, because it needs to create a stat system that can work for all sports in an interesting way, or run the risk of muddying the waters too much by creating stats for each sport, but unfortunately, the stats for Sports Story don't really accomplish either of these. Sports Story has three stats, Power, Control, and Strike. Every time you fill up your progress bar one-third of the way, your strike will increase by one, when you get to two-thirds, your control will increase, and then when the bar fills up all the way, your power increases. The only times that you get to choose a stat to level up are when you clear a chapter or chat with a certain trainer in a gym. So, as you can imagine, you have next to no control over your character's build, and your character's progression feels next to non-existent. How have we gone from this system in Golf Story that was interesting and intuitive to this bare-bones system? The only stat that even really feels like it does anything is the power stat, since you can notice that your driving distance is further than before, but you will likely never notice any changes in your strike stat while playing the BMX or baseball minigames or anything like that. The progression loop in Sports Story is completely absent. Your character will feel the exact same in Chapter 8 as they did in Chapter 1, which is super disappointing, because this is something that Sports Story could have really expanded and improved from its predecessor. Another strange missed opportunity is the sports licenses. After you help with some sports-related quests, you'll get punches in a punch card. If you get enough of these punches, you can upgrade your sports license, which will allow you to progress to new areas. So yeah, don't go around thinking you can ignore those sports-related quests either if you want to progress because you need those to upgrade your license. It doesn't matter what sport the quest is because the punch cards aren't specific to any sports and your license basically just upgrades from C to SSS without really any reward besides the ability to progress to new areas. Upgrading your license feels like an empty husk of a mechanic. It feels like it's just here to say to the player, look, you're progressing, rather than giving the player that impression through story or gameplay. If the license upgrades were taken out of the game, almost nothing would change beyond the player not needing to do some of these extra sports-related quests. And what's disappointing is that this could have been a good way to introduce players to different sports. Imagine if players needed to get badges for each different sport, and to get those badges, you need to do quests related to that sport. So then, once you got that badge, you could go to the corresponding area that has a storyline all about that sport. So for example, you go to the batting cages in the mall, do some batting challenges, then maybe you have a little quest with an ex-pro baseball player, and upon clearing that, you can go to a baseball diamond to rise through the ranks of the baseball league. It seems simple, but this would give way more value to the sports licenses, and frankly, all of the sports beyond golf and tennis, and would have made this game's devotion to having this many sports seem way more organic and fun than its current setup. The weird thing is that this is already in the game to some degree. The Tennis Academy works just like what I just described, but the problem is is that the rest of the game is not built around this. So we, unfortunately, don't get a focused, linear story that develops all of the sports and gives them time to shine. However, we also don't get interesting, fleshed out campaigns for all of the sports, and this winds up making the Tennis Academy a chore and makes the rest of the sports feel like an afterthought. Now, one idea that I think Sports Story really does well with is the different types of golf ball that you can use. You can purchase and find a variety of different golf balls while you play, which all have different strengths and weaknesses, like the metal ball, which ignores wind but flies shorter, and the crazy ball, which has a further driving distance but a more unpredictable bounce. While yes, this is only usable in golf, it is fun to collect and use different golf balls with different effects for different scenarios. This gives you lots of options to approach a certain hole the way you want to, so you can use something like a vector ball to approach more easily, or maybe you want to use a honey ball to avoid more bounce 
bouncing and distance lost. The balancing isn't perfect. I personally think that the vector ball is a little too good with very minimal drawbacks, but this system is super fun and I would have loved to see something like this in a game more centered around golf where you could make this idea even more interesting. If there's another thing that I can absolutely praise Sports Story for, I would say that the clever writing and dry humor are still as present as ever in this game. There are lots of very humorous and witty lines in here that did genuinely make me laugh. The moment-to-moment -moment writing is very enjoyable, even if I thought that the overarching plot was pretty muddled and slow-paced. There are hints of an interesting story in here about a huge corporation buying up all of these smaller golf courses, creating a monopoly and ruining resources, but it's buried under a sea of filler arcs and doesn't really show up in any meaningful capacity until about halfway through the game. It feels like there was supposed to be a grander, more interesting story that was supposed to be a lot more cohesive than it is. Sports Story also features a nice bump in the sprite work over Golf Story. From lush autumn forests to deserts with oil rigs, there's a real charm to the art in this game that I find enjoyable. However, there's a crucial aspect that really prevents me from loving the presentation of this game. Sports Story is a buggy game at best and is borderline broken at worst. There are so many performance issues with this game that permeate throughout the entire experience. Firstly, the game struggles to maintain a decent frame rate in all different kinds of situations. Even simple tasks like running from one side of the town to the other will cause the game to chug and run at a frame rate that melts the graphics into some eye-straining mush. The game also has a tendency to stop too, which is a real pain when you're trying to time golf swings and can cause you to mess up shots that you definitely would have hit otherwise. But beyond this, you'll also run into more frustrating issues like certain trigger points not working, UI not showing up at all, missions failing when you should clear them, clearing missions when you probably shouldn't have cleared them, whatever this is, and some soft locks too. There are so many parts of this game that feel like they weren't play tested. Take this mission in chapter 7. What you have to do is put these TVs into this dumpster for scrap metal. Seems simple enough, right? Well, while I was carrying these TVs, a prompt showed up on my HUD that gave me the option to throw the TV with X. So I go about throwing these TVs into the dumpster, only to come to realize that you're actually not supposed to throw them into the dumpster, but instead place them with A. And throwing them in actually doesn't count, which begs the question, why even have the throwing prompt at all? Well, the worst part is that if you throw the TVs, they don't respawn, which means that you destroyed your clear condition and are now softlocked. To throw salt in the wound, I then got hit by this tornado and it locked my controls, so I had no other option but to quit the game and restart for my last save and do everything all over again. Now, is it possible that I'm just an idiot for throwing the TVs in instead of placing them? Sure, but does this warrant completely softlocking the game and forcing me back to my last save as punishment? However, this wasn't the only game-breaking issue that I encountered. In the Tennis Academy, there's a mission that you need to do by talking to the receptionist and then watching over some kids. It's also important to note that the receptionist did handle matters of detention as well previously in the story. Well, later, I was told that I got detention again, and since there was no waypoint system and no clear direction for who I needed to talk to, I talked to the receptionist again, since she's handled detention matters before. Well, the receptionist sent me back on a mission to take care of the kids again, and so I figured that I must have talked to the wrong person, but as it turns out, talking to the receptionist again, resets your progress but advances your mission. And now my task list is messed up, so I have no idea how to even go about getting back to where I was previously, which might as well be another softlock. It was at this point that I was virtually unable to continue playing the game and completely dropped it. Now, as of writing this video, there is a patch in the works to solve this issue and undo the softlock and a few others, but for me, the damage has already been done and I'm not sure if I'll come back to properly beat the game once the patch releases. Sports Story is to me, one of the most disappointing games that I've played in a long while. The developers of this game, Sidebar Games, knocked it out of the park with their initial release back when the Switch was in its infancy, and now, over five years later, their sequel to that charming game has a chronic case of sequelitis in all of the worst ways possible. And what bums me out the most about this release is that I know that there's a skeleton of a good, even great game here. Now look, I don't work for this developer, and I'm not about to speculate what all happened with this game's development development or anything like that. But to me, the evidence is pretty clear that Sports Story was supposed to be so, so much more than it is. There's even some pretty depressing evidence in the game that this final product is not what Sports Story was supposed to be. I know that gamers are always going to react negatively to delays, but I really wish that this game could have been delayed until the developer's full vision could be released, rather than the unfortunate state that Sports Story is in today. This game feels unfinished, not even just from a performance standpoint. 
Even if every single performance issue gets patched, Sports Story is still an underwhelming experience that doesn't flesh its mechanics out enough to be interesting, and has way too many monotonous filler quests to be enjoyable. If these games seem interesting to you, I highly recommend that you pick up Golf Story and pass on Sports Story. I will be looking forward to Sidebar Games' future endeavors in the hopes that their next game will fare much better, but Sports Story was easily one of the weakest games that I played last year. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The vast majority of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed, and subscribing is completely free and helps me to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope that you have a great rest of your day.